Chapter 13 of The Doll's House by Ruma Godden. It was winter when Totty came back to the doll's house. If you would like to know how winter looks to a doll, imagine yourself as looking into a crystal ball, a ball of glass, in which a Christmas frost snowstorm is being shaken down on little splintered trees and cardboard houses. Children were given those snowstorm balls when great-great-aunt Laura and Emily and Charlotte's great-grandmother were young. Winter looks like that to dolls because they are not often taken out in the winter and they see the snow and snowflakes through the window panes of glass. Totty came back and it was winter, but so far there was no snow. Emily and Charlotte took her with them when they went to Mrs Innesbury's house to fetch the couch and chairs. Totty ought to go because it was Totty who really got the chairs for us, said Emily. Are the couch and chairs really coming, Totty asked Mr Plantagenet. We have been wishing and wishing. I have never really stopped wishing, said Mr Plantagenet. But it was you who got them for us, Totty, he said. Dear Totty, but I should have been quite content with cotton reels, said Birdie. Oh, Birdie, dear, said Mr Plantagenet impatiently. Sometimes he found it hard to be patient with Birdie. Apple was not there. He had a plan unknown to Totty that he might climb up to the doll's house chimney. He thought he might climb up the ivy. It looked so real, but of course it was painted too flat and the paint was far too slippery. Emily made Totty a cotton wool cap and a cotton wool muff to go out in as it was beginning to be bitterly cold. But we are cosy in the doll's house, said Mr Plantagenet. The whiteness of the cotton wool looked pretty with Totty's glossy black hair and painted cheeks. She shone with happiness. Birdie did not want a cap or a muff. She wanted a feather boa. What is a boa? asked Apple, forgetting the ivy. It is a long scarf, but made out of feathers, and is it round all the way down, explained Totty. Like a caterpillar, asked Apple, who had seen a caterpillar in the park. Yes, a caterpillar would make a very good boa for Birdie, said Totty. If it were made out of feathers, said Birdie, but it's not. Totty was carried along to Mrs Innisfree's on the palm of Charlotte's hand. Charlotte had on a red woollen glove. Totty had on her red woollen cloak, her cap and muff. They went well together. It was a clear, pale, cold, sunny day. The bare branches of the trees in the park stood out against a clear, pale sky. The cold touched Totty's cheeks and the sunlight made them glisten. Emily and Charlotte were talking of Christmas and Totty was suddenly reminded of a little sunshade, a parasol, not made like the walking doll's parasol from satin, but of paper from a cracker. I saw one long ago, said Totty. It was gay as a little paper wheel. How Bertie would love that, thought Totty. How I should like to give her one for Christmas. She would like it better than the feather boa. But you don't see them nowadays. I wish, said Totty, sitting on Charlotte's hand, and for apple, a marble. A marble would make him a good ball. And for Dana, a tiddlywinks place, plate, a nice big purple one. And for Mr Plantagenet, I wish they would think of getting him a toy post office, thought Totty. Then he could go to business. If he went to business every day, he would be very happy. I wish and wish they would get him a toy po- post office. When they arrived in Mrs Innesfree's house, Totty forgot even about Christmas and Christmas presents. There on the table in Mrs Innisfree's drawing room were the couch and chairs. Emily did not recognise them. Charlotte did not recognise them. Totty did not recognise them. Their wood, having been carefully sandpapered, had been polished by Mrs Innisfree's French polisher until it shone with a real furniture dark wood shine of its own. Then the petty point seats and arms and backs had been fastened over new cushions. Mrs Innisfree had worked the cream background and the tiny roses and leaves. She had even worked their shadings, though the flowers were scarcely bigger than knots or dots. Oh, cried Emily and Charlotte. Oh, cried Totty. It was worth going to the exhibition. Even the Queen's doll's house, said Emily, hasn't a better set than that. Yes, that is perfectly right, said Totty. She felt now she knew something about Queen's. Then Mrs Innisfree put down on the table two pairs of fine white lace curtains, each curtain six inches long. 
I saw the piece of lace, she said. It was the right width and just the right length, and there is a piece three inches over, so I made an apron for Totty. Do you see, Emily, the lace is worked with ferns. Your great-grandmother's drawing room might easily have had lace curtains worked with ferns. They were very fashionable then. We shall keep them always. We shall never change them, said Emily solemnly, nor will our children's children. And how it all leads on, said Emily. Yes, it joins, said Charlotte, wrinkling her forehead. I have been thinking of thinking, and there is no knowing where it leads to, or when it will end, or where. Do you suppose Totty will see them, asked Charlotte. I mean our children's children, not the chairs. She may, said Emily. That makes me think, said Charlotte. And she added, I seem to have been thinking a great deal of thinking lately. It was a solemn morning. Mrs Innisfree and Emily did an account, and it seemed that the cost of the lace curtains, of Mrs Innisfree's French polisher and upholsterer, and of the silks and canvas for the chairs, came to eight and tenpence, which was just the money they had had in their money boxes, though Charlotte now had the sixpence for her tooth, and Emily had saved another half-crown. I believe you are saying eight and tenpence, said Emily, looking hard at Mrs Innisfree, because you knew it was eight and tenpence that we had, said Emily. And if I am, said Mrs Innisfree, if I enjoy it. And we can't pay you for the time, said Charlotte, nor for the thinking. I wonder what makes thinking, said Charlotte. It is funny how one thing begins another.